Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic holding well and today we're doing a box office preview for the next couple of months because really there isn't a whole lot set to be released and it makes me want to ask the question, are August and September becoming the new January of film releases or at the very least when it comes to the year 2022 because that's certainly how it feels as there are not all that many major releases in the films that are coming out maybe have some interest in them, but are independent in nature, or are kind of specialty item films like, for instance, Dragon Ball Super, or a re-release of Jaws, Spider-Man No Way Home. I mean, this is kind of what we have been left with at this point, and it just, again, I think does beg the question, are we in the new... January of the film's uh, year, of the calendar year, as it were. Before any further, though, please make sure you smash that like button, lap that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification on that way. You know what time in a video or live stream goes live on the channel. So as you can see, we do have actually a couple of new films coming out this weekend, including Beast, which is projected to make 10 to 15 million in its opening, 31 to 49 million by the end of its run, and also Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Now, I have not kept up with Dragon Ball Super. I was a big fan of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z back in the day. I've seen some of the Dragon Ball Super stuff, and overall looks pretty good. But I have just not been able to uh, keep up with it as I was once when I was a little bit younger. But with these two films especially, I look at them and I think to myself, okay, Dragon Ball Super specialty event, right? It's going to do pretty well for a limited release. It's going to have some limited release number, I'm sure, as far as the number of theaters is concerned. And it's probably going to do pretty well, though it does seem to be projecting downward compared to the original projections from Box Office Pro, down about 11% at this point. But hey, it's probably still going to be pretty successful nonetheless here in in the States. But then I look at a film like Beast, and if you've not even ever heard of the movie Beast, I wouldn't blame you. There have been trailers for it. I remember seeing it. It's a film starring Idris Elba fighting a very, very, very CGI lion. Yes, that's right. It's called Beast because a recently widowed husband returning to South Africa where he first met his wife on a long planned trip with the two young daughters to a game reserve managed by an old family friend and fellow wildlife biologist, soon a ferocious man-hunting wild lion begins attacking them and killing anyone in its path. Something tells me that there's probably going to be a deeper meaning behind it all, like that the lion's going to somehow represent something, or there's going to be some deeper uh, meaning behind it all. It's only supposed to be about a 90-minute story or a 90-minute film. However, it just doesn't really all look all that compelling. As much as I would like to see Idris Elba, you know, fighting, I don't necessarily would, I don't want to see him fighting a, a, a CGI lion. All right, that's not something that really I have any real interest in. And that's what it is based on the trailers of the film and based on the general synopsis. And if you've seen the trailer, you know what I'm talking about when you say and when I say that that CGI is, is just cringeworthy. The CGI is just not good, and it's just kind of, again, a reminiscent and, and reminder of the fact that modern-day CGI, even though we continue to spend more and more money, or the studios continue to spend more and more money on the technology, it just doesn't really seem to be going much of anywhere. I mean, obviously, we've had major changes over the last 10 and 20 years, but it's also, I think, made many of these companies very lazy in not relying as much on practical effects, or at the very least, over-relying on CG elements. And so, you know, back in the day, they might have had an actual lion on set for a couple of sequences and then mixed it in with some CGI or things like that, or at least had the, you know, the lion not be seen as much. So that way they could save a little bit of money and therefore the money that they would spend on the actual CGI would actually not look nearly as 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 atrocious. Um, again, the poster doesn't make it seem like that, but that is not what the lion looks like in the trailer. But hey, if you were excited about movies coming out in August, Beast, a 2022 American film with Idris Elba, where he fights a CGI lion, I would much rather watch The Grey watching Liam Neeson fight CGI wolves, which look a heck of a lot better than what we've seen so far as far as the trailers are concerned for the movie Beast. But yeah, that's what's coming out this weekend as well as Dragon Ball Super. So for anyone who is a Dragon Ball fan, hey, this might be something that is for you. Again, I have not uh, kept up with it. It was really set for release uh, in Japan on April 22nd, 2022, but it was instead released on June 11th due to a cyber attack. Wow. So they had a cyber attack on them. People going after Dragon Ball, everybody. Yes. Yes, I know. I know people are excited for this, but at the same time, when kind of the biggest news of the movie-going world this week has to do with the fact that we have to remind ourselves that there was a cyber attack on Toei Animation. Probably trying to get early access to that movie, if I had to guess. Wow. Interesting stuff there. And again, is August and September the place where now movies go to die? Another film coming out, not this weekend, but next weekend, are two films, actually three films, The Invitation, Fear, and Three 
Thousand Years of Longing. I believe Invitation will probably be a bit of a wider release, whereas Fear and Three Thousand Years of Longing will be more of the limited release schedule. But the Invitation, this is one that I remember seeing some. Uh, I remember seeing some uh, some pr pr promotions for. Uh, originally, this film was apparently titled The Bride. Uh, it says, after the death of her mother and having no other known relatives, Evie, uh, Nathalie Emmanuel, takes a DNA test and discovers a long lost cousin she never knew she had. Invited by her newfound family to a lavish wedding in the English countryside, she's at first seduced by the sexy aristocrat host, but is soon thrust into a nightmare of survival as she uncovers twists, secrets, and her family's history and the unsettling intentions behind their sinful generosity. Oh, sinful generosity. Apparently, it's inspired by Dracula. So, a modern adaptation, interpretation of Dracula, or at the very least, something that's inspired by, at the very least, Dracula. So, I guess they're vampires. If you've seen the trailer, it doesn't really seem to make it all that clear about whether or not they are actual vampires or whether they're, they're just like a weird cult or not. But yeah, Horror film coming out. People that are interested in horror films got a couple weeks on this one. Can't say I'm really all that excited for it based on the trailer alone. You also have that film. Uh, again, uh, you have uh, The Invitation. Then you also have 3,000 Years of Longing as well. This is actually the only one that I have any general interest in because not only does it star Idris Elba. Oh, Idris Elba in another film. Oh, my goodness. Two weeks and two films in a row for Idris Elba. Wow. Idris Elba, all over the place at this point. But I'm actually a pretty big fan of Tilda Swinton as an actress. She's just crazy, she's weird, she's quirky, and she's also already done a film that has a very similar title to this. Um, <laughs> so, if you know which one I'm talking about, she plays a, a vampire in that one, and uh, it, it has a very similar name to it, and the, the name's currently uh, escaping me. And since I like to do these things live, let's go ahead and pull up uh, the Tilda Swinton page and look up the uh, filmography here for, for her films. Let's see right here. Ah, Tilda Swin filmography. This is the one that I'm actually looking for here. Where is the actual title of that film? Because, okay, no. So, it was only Lovers Left Alive. But it, even though the title's not the same, get I got that part wrong, it is a very, I feel like it's just kind of a similar story in, in certain respects. I don't know. It's just her being, being weird in this instance. In this case, she was with Tom Hiddleston. And instead, now with this movie, she's with... Uh, <laughs> instead, instead, now, instead, now she... Uh, She's with Idris Elba. But anyway, apparently in this one, uh, you have Idris Elba as a djinn who offers her three wishes in exchange for his freedom. Their conversation in a hotel in Istanbul leads to consequences neither would have expected. So, dealing with long time, long periods of waiting. I guess that's the similarity there between the two. As you can see, I'm kind of stretching for stuff here because there really isn't a whole lot. Maybe this is the new January of films after all. But that doesn't become even more clear when you get to the end of October, or rather the end of August, and into January, where you have Honk for Jesus to Save Your Soul. Oh, man. That's, I'm sure, going to be great and, and pro-Christian. And then you have the re-releases of Jaws. That's awesome. Spider-Man No Way Home, the more fun, for stun, uh, more fun stuff version. Okay, that's a terrible renaming of the film, but I see what they're trying to do with that one. I'm sure it'll do pretty well at the box office. And then you have Barbarian a week after that. All right, so Honk for Jesus. Oh, yeah, everyone wants to go see this one, starring Regina Hall, well-known for her comedy chops, I guess, and Sterling K. Brown in it as well. He's a pretty talented actor. I actually like him overall. Apparently, this is being produced, though, underneath one of the banners of Jordan Peele, so, hey, <laughs> you know that that's going to... Oh, yeah, you know that that's going to make, make it a great film. Honk for Jesus, Save Your Soul. Hmm, interesting stuff. I'm sure, again, everyone's wanting to go see this movie. Again, originally, this film was put out on January 23rd at Sundance. Now coming out to a theater near you in the coming month. Also, you have Barbarian, as I mentioned before. An American horror film directed by Zach Kreger. Don't know much about that. Apparently, part of the troupe, The Whitest Kids You Know. I've heard of that a little bit. Bill Skarsgård, he's pretty creepy. Georgina Campbell, don't know much about her. Justin Long, he's kind of this weird actor nowadays where he's, you know, in these random... I remember seeing, actually, the trailer for this. Actually, no. It's thank, thank you, Justin Long. Thank you, Justin Long. Because you are always in, like, these weird, obscure films now, it seems, at least at least to my memory. And so I remember now this film because I remember seeing the sequence where you're, like, crawling out of the dark. <laughs> so Barbarian, I can only imagine what Barbarian's about. But as the synopsis says, it's a young woman traveling to Detroit for her job interview, books a rental home, but when she arrives late at night, she discovers that the house is double booked, and a strange man, played by <laughs> Bill Skarsgård, yeah, that creepy dude, 
Uh, against her better judgment, she decides to spend the evening, but soon discovers there's a lot more to fear than just an unexpected house guest. Ah, yes, they're not alone. The fact that Justin Long is cast in the film kind of gives that part away a little bit. This one actually is the most interesting and intriguing, I would say, out of all of the uh, horror films that to come out. Again, it's weird. August and September becoming now where some horror films are coming out. Normally, that was reserved just for October. Is this really... The new January. I think it is in a lot of ways. You look at those box office numbers. Again, Barbarian, 9 to 14 million. This is the newest projections that we have from Box Office Pro. Long-term domestic, 22 to 37 million. This is under the 20th Century Studios banner. Can't imagine that Barbarian costs all that much money. We don't have any actual uh, listed budgets yet. Invitation likely also didn't cost a lot. Beast is the one I'm most interested in as far as budget is concerned. And we'll find out pretty soon, I imagine. Just because of all the use of CGI. And just because of how not good that lion looks. But let me know, do you think that September and August are are now becoming kind of the new January? I mean, I I guess this could have always been the case. I've just never recognized or never realized before in my years of, you know, covering the box office now at this point that you have these these months, right, like like August, September. I've never remembered them being this dead. I've never remembered them being this dead as far as not having any major releases whatsoever. And of the releases coming out, a couple of them are marginally interesting, while others you're just like, yeah, okay. I, I don't plan to go see Beast opening night, but hey, maybe I'll have to because it's <laughs> the only film coming out this weekend. Maybe instead I'll go see some other films that I think are a lot better, like Bullet Train, which I highly recommend everyone go see, or Top Gun Maverick, which I highly recommend people go see. Some updated numbers here. But anyway, what are y'all's thoughts about any of these films that have to come out? Any of these films catch your interest? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, smash that like button. Live that fire button. And honestly, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my Keeper of the Bifrost and Chosen of Valhalla members over on Patreon, Subscribestar, and Locals. Starting off with my Patreon supporters, we got Chris from the 80s, who you can check out on YouTube, Garrett Searles, Hymir Irie Hymason, Jeff Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Father Luca Illich, Orange Hat Reviews, who you can also check out on YouTube, Rosetta Allen, whose YouTube channel's name is Eagle Rider, Stan Andrea. Miss Martin Muses, who also has a YouTube channel, and the Empress of the Universe, Tina B, who you can check out on her show that she does with the amazing Stephanie B, my Valkyrie, uh, on a show called Soup to Nuts on Tina B's channel. Also to my subscribe star peeps, we got Matt317, who you can support over on Twitch, same name, Storm Tracker, The R, Fast Reaction, Mr. Roy, J-Rod, The Beer Guru, and ZK Man, who you can support over at xtheboundaries.co. And lastly, to my locals, members. We got Miss Minnesota Hockey Fan. How about a hockey player? We have UAB Mad Dog Mike Jackson for the win. Brett D90 and Robert Barnes, who most people should know about at this point. So go support him over at InfoWars uh, YouTube and all the other locations that he is at. But if you want your name shout out at the end of every single video and live stream, check out that top link in the video description. Finds out all the places that you can follow me on social media and also all the various platforms that you can support the channel, which include not only shout outs, but also access to giveaways of 4K titles, Blu-rays, Uh, Tons of other stuff uh, like that, digital codes, and then also uh, a way to get access to being featured on the channel once a month for the Chosen of Valhalla live stream, where we're talking about movies, pop culture, and pretty much anything the Chosen want to talk about. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, check out the video description. There's also a access to a podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger once or twice a month, and don't worry if you were wondering where the July episode is because of scheduling conflicts, especially with John, we were not able to get that done, but we will have two episodes this month to make up for it, so don't you worry about that. Anyway, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, God bless.